Hey guys, this is Basketball Still 1130. I'm back with another position ranking for the NBA for this season. So yesterday I ranked all 30 starting NBA point guards in the tiers, and today I'm ranking all 30 starting shooting guards, two guards, into tiers. Um, I thought it would be better instead of stacking them up 1 through 30 against each other to make them into tiers. So I got five tiers here, superstar, star, Above average, average, and below average slash bum. Superstars are the best of the best. Um, no in question, they're a superstar. Star is, they're a consistent all-star, but not in the upper echelon tier of superstars yet. Above averages, yeah, maybe borderline all-stars. They can give you solid minutes. Averages, eh, they don't, they don't, they're not really close to an all-star berth, but they can still provide some good things, but not anything great. And um, below average slash bum is like, why are they even starting? They should be coming off the bench. They don't do really doesn't do much really for their team. So anyways, let's get started. So for the shooting guard superstar category, we have Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns. A lot of people are going to put Devin Booker in star, but and a lot of people say if he has a really good season this year, they'll move him up to superstar. I think he already is a superstar because for all those years that the Suns were bad, um, Devin Booker was their one and only bright spot, and now they got Chris. Now that they got Chris Paul, he's just going to grow more and more from DeAndre Ayton with that pick and rolls. That pick and roll is going to be really deadly with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, um, and they got a running mate in Chris Paul. So I think Devin Booker is already a solidified superstar, in my opinion, no question. Uh, next, we have Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards. Bradley Beal, they traded with John Wall, his running mate for years. Um, because John Wall crushed the trade, but they did acquire Russell Westbrook. Um, but Bradley Beal is already a superstar. He put up consistent numbers the last like two or three years. He's went off. Well, John Wall has been injured. Um, they let him really lead the offense, have the keys to the offense, and now that he has Russ, they're gonna work well in tandem together. And they looked good in preseason and in the games um to start the season. So, yeah, in the season opener. So, Bradley Beal is a superstar in my opinion. Next, Donovan Mitchell. A lot of people of the Utah Jazz, a lot of people are going to put him in star category. I think he's a superstar already. They gave him an extension for good reason. Yes, they, I will admit they did overpay Grossi for Rudy Gobert, in my opinion, um, in a lot of people's opinions. But they got Donovan Mitchell. They found a gem in the draft. And um, I didn't think he was going to be this good out of Louisville. I basically didn't even know who he was. Um, but... um. He is really good. I think he's already a bona fide superstar, in my opinion. And then last player in superstar category, I have seen James Harden of the Houston Rockets. I don't care where he is. He's still a superstar. Even if he gets traded to the Nets, the Heat, even though the Heat pulled out, I, guess, I think, the other day of the um, trade things. But the Nets, the Heat, yeah, the Nets, the Heat, the 76ers, um, Warriors would be crazy, but Warriors... Um, so, yeah, but wherever he goes, he's still a superstar. Next star category, we've got a decent amount of guys in here. Fred Van Fleet, Raptors. He can make his way up to a superstar maybe in two or three years. Um, I know he's veteran, veteran in this. I know he's a veteran in this league. But um, Fred Van Fleet's really good. I really like him. It was a debate between star or above average, but I got to put him in star because he gives so much for his team. Um, and he helps Pascal Siakam really well. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, next, we got Paul George of the Los Angeles Clippers. Some people might put Paul George in superstar. I'm not up there yet, but if he has a really good year this year, maybe bounce back. Maybe I will put him up there, but for now, he's going to be a superstar next to Kawhi Leonard. Um, superstar. For now, he's going to be a star. I mean, Paul George is a star for now next to Kawhi Leonard, so Paul George is in the star tier, the star category. Let's see here. Next, we have... Zach Levine of the Chicago Bulls is a star, in my opinion. He goes in the star tier. I was almost putting him in above average, but I thought, like, he's a really good bright spot for their team. The Bulls aren't very good, but him and Kobe are developing nicely together. Even though I think they should probably trade Zach Levine, um, they might. I don't think they will because they just like him so much. But him and Kobe White are developing well together as a guard tandem. And maybe in a couple, two or three years, they can be a, a few years, they can be one of the best guard backcourts in the NBA. Not like on Dame and CJ or like, or like Clay and Steph level, but they they can be up there, maybe top five. Just give them a few years, maybe two or three years, and they'll be up there probably. So Zach Levine will go in the star tier for me. Next, Victor Oladipo of the Pacers. A lot of people want to say superstar. Well, I don't think anyone was saying superstar. A lot of people were saying he was underrated a couple years ago, but then he got injured. He like broke his leg or something. Um, 
two seasons ago, and he came back in January of last year, and he just did not benefit from the layoff because uh, of COVID, the COVID break at all. I say break, but the COVID break at all. Um, he When he came back in January, he didn't look impressive at all. His injury was still nagging. He didn't look 100%. He didn't really do much, so I'm going to put him in the star category. But if he has a really bad next couple of years, not consistent at all, I might move him down to above average. Next, CJ McCollum of the Trailblazer. Blazer, Portland Trailblazers. A lot of people are going to say above average if you say that, and I'll listen to your argument. But me personally, he's still a star. He can still play make. He can still shoot, maybe not as well as Dame, but definitely not as well as Dame. But he can still shoot the lights out to the building. And, um, yeah, I'm going to put CJ and Colin in the star category, star tier. Next, above average, we got quite a few guys here, actually. Um, next, Marcus Smart of the Boston Celtics. In the game last night, he took one, two, three. He took three charges from Giannis Antetokounmpo um, last night in the game. He took three charges. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, he's a really gritty guy. He'll, whoever he goes, whoever goes up against him will have a tough night, in my opinion. So, yeah, Marcus Smart is above average, in my opinion. Um, next, Spencer Dinwiddie of the Brooklyn Nets. Same thing. He's not as well as the defenders, Mark Smart, but he's that energy guy. He can stroke it from time to time from three, but he just makes the right play at right plays at the right time. So, uh, yeah, Spencer Dinwiddie is definitely a guy you want on your team. Next, Seth Curry of the Philadelphia 76ers. St- famous Steph Curry's, fam- most known as Steph Curry's brother, but Seth, Seth Curry, Seth Curry has made his own name for himself. Um, he's going to be starting over Danny Green, which is a good decision in my opinion, because Danny Green struggled mightily last year in the playoff for the Lakers. Even though they still won the championship, but he struggled mightily. Um, he didn't really contribute much in the postseason anyway. But, um, especially in the final series against the Heat. But, um, Seth Curry got traded to the Sixers in exchange for, I forgot what the deal was, but he got there somehow. Oh, that's right, Josh Richardson. On draft night, the, um, the uh, Sixers traded Josh Richardson to the Mavericks in exchange for Seth. The Mavericks traded Seth Curry, so it was basically Josh Richardson for Seth Curry. Josh Richardson to the Mavericks, Seth Curry to Sixers. So uh, yeah, but Seth Curry can shoot well. His passing isn't the best, but his defense is gritty. He can really shoot well. He provides nice shooting for that Sixers team, which they they need depth in shooting. And now they may have one of the best depth in the league. So, uh, uh yeah. Um, next in the above average category, we got Andrew Wiggins, the Warriors. I'm tired of people saying, hold on a minute. Sorry about that. I was just having a sip of water. Um, I'm tired of people saying like, oh, this is the w- year that Wiggins will pop off and Wiggins will get going. Wiggins will break out. But he, <laughs> in that first Warriors game, it's just not going to happen. He's still the same. He's still going to be the above average player his whole career. It's time to like give up on the narrative that, he, oh, he's going to break out. He's going to be a superstar one day. He's going to be a superstar this season. No, like he is what he is. So Andrew Wiggins will stay in the above average category, above average tier, and I don't see him moving up at all in his career. At all in his career. It's sad to say, but um, yeah. Uh, next, we got KCP of the... Contavious Cobo Pope, better known as KCP of the Los Angeles Lakers. He can really shoot it. Maybe some people he's declined. He's kind of hot and cold in the playoffs. But in the finals, he was great for the Lakers against the Heat. He provides some nice shooting. He, his passing is underrated. His defense is underrated. Basically, he's just the energy guy like Spencer Dinwiddie and Marcus Smart that you just want on your team. That you just He's basically that en- high-energy guy flying around the court. So, uh... Yeah, KCP, Contavious Caldwell Pope, whatever you want to call him. KC, Contavious, KCP will go in the above average category. Next, Buddy Heald of the Kings. Maybe like a couple of years ago in his young career, in, when he was a little younger, he was a star, but apparently he went out of Sacramento. And I don't blame him. I don't think they're using him the correct way with Luke Walton. <clears throat> Excuse me for a minute. With Luke Walton there, I don't think they're utilizing his full talent, but he can really shoot. He's one of the best shooters in the league, one of the best shooters in the NBA. So, uh, yeah, but he'll go in the above average tier. Next, we got Colin Sexton of the Cavaliers. A lot of people are putting him in the star category. I know I'm a Cavaliers fan, and I'm not going to be biased here. Like, Colin Sexton isn't a star yet for me. But he, if he has a really good year this year, he hit, definitely will be a star. I think he has potential to move up to a superstar in, like, three or four years. He's looked really good so far. Um. Because he moved to the two guard, the shooting guard spot, once they drafted Darius Garland, who had to play the point guard spot. And Colin Sexton's better suited there because he's more of a scoring guard. He doesn't play make much. He can, but he's more of a scoring guard. So, uh, 
yeah, that's that. Next, we got DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright of the Detroit Pistons. Um, I was considering putting him in the average category, bumping him down in tier instead of the above average category. But he does some nice nice things. He can still give you solid minutes. So uh, I'm gonna, the Pistons aren't going to be good this year, but him and Killian Hayes, I think, will be the bright spots for them. Um, so, yeah. Next, we got Bogdan Bogdanovich of the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, no. I skipped one. Okay, I'll do this first. Bogdan Bogdanovich of the Atlanta Hawks. Um, he'll be their starting shooting guard because it's their starting shooting guard video. Um, but I think he's 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 an underrated shooter. He can really he has a really nice stroke. Um, he can really play make. His play make is underrated. His defense is underrated. His decision making sometimes is a little eh. But you know that's how it goes. He's not. He's a veteran. So the Hawks signed Rajon Rondo, Bogdan Bogdanovich, the draft on Yaka Kungwu, on. Onyeka Okongwu from US, center from USC. They got Daniel Gallinari. They got John Collins. They got Clint Capella. And even though they they have a log jam at that part forward slash center, they have a log jam at the big man the bigs big man positions. They uh, the their bigs have a log jam, but uh, two minutes done. Can help the guys, but to go around. But I think Bogdan 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 Bogdanovich will work now. Well, <laughs> Bogdan Bogdanovich will work well next to Trey Young in this offense. So. Uh, can't wait to see how he plays. Next in the above average tier, we got... This is the one I've skipped, but I'll go back to it. We got Dante DiVincenzo of the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, Dante DiVincenzo, his shooting is getting there. His playmate... Basically, he's growing. I don't like him a lot. I was, putting him, move, I was considering moving him down to the average category. But um, I'm going to put him above average. But uh, I don't think he'll ever be a star. I don't think he'll ever be a superstar in... Superstar, not even a star any to that extent, um, but I think he is an above edge player. I think he can turn into someone well next to Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo is finally getting his time to shine. So yeah, next tier Rozier of the Hornets. Um, I don't really see anyone putting him star, but he went off last night for the Hornets. Forty two three. Um, forty two points. Um. Most in Charlotte, Horn most in Hornets franchise history for an opening night game, forty two, and then he made ten three pointers made, most threes made in an opening night game in NBA history. So forty two points with three ten three point pointers made. So Terry Rozier went off last night. That's why he's above average for me. Um, he's kind of had a resurgence lately. People question why they overpaid him. Why they overpaid him like that? Um. Yeah, why they overpaid Terry Rozier a couple years ago in free agency. They poached him from the Celtics, but um, yeah, but he's tur even I said that, but he's turning into a nice player for them. So last night he went off, forty two points, ten three point with ten three pointers made. Next, Duncan Duncan Robinson of the Miami Heat. He went to Michigan and no one was talking about him. He went undrafted, um, but he could stroke the ball like he can make it from anywhere. He he's a three point specialist. He doesn't really do anything else. His defense is okay. His playmaking is underrated, in my opinion, but he can really shoot. So he's above average. He's got to um, improve and um, build on some of the categories he's lacking right now, but he's still young, really young, and he was an undrafted guy. So, uh, yeah. Next, we got Tim Hardaway Jr. of the Mavericks in the um, above average tier. Yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr. of the Mavericks. He can really shoot. He can really play make. Maybe... I think he's better that, than he was on the Knicks. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but I think he, he's better than he was on the Knicks. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm putting him in the above average tier. Next, we got Dylan Brooks of the Grizzlies. Some people don't say he's a star. I'm not going to go that far. But uh, I was even considered – you can put him in star above average or average. But I think um, the right um, move for him – or the right placement for him is in the above average tier because – he does a lot of good things, not anything great, but he does a lot of good things. He's just one of those high energy guys that you want on your team, like a couple other guys on this list, in this tier. Next, so that's Dylan Brooks of the Grizzlies. Next, we got Eric Bledsoe of the Pelicans. So Eric Bledsoe went to the Pelicans because the Bucks gave the Pelicans Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, and three first round picks for Drew Holiday. George Hill's not going to do much on there, but um, Eric Bledsoe. 
I think he'll work well next to Lanza Ball. He can mentor Lanza Ball. I just don't like Eric Bledsoe's game. Like, I was considering moving him down to average, but I'll put him in average. But shooting and shot selection, I don't really like that much. His passing, I don't really like that much. The only good thing about him, he's a gritty defensive guy, but he does a couple of more things good. He just needs to improve in some of those areas that he's lacking that I just mentioned. So he's the last guy here, and he's the last guy that's going to go in the above average, above average category for me. So next average, we got a decent amount of guys here. So we got Alec Burks of the Knicks. He's not anything special. He's just average on the 76ers last, the last couple of years. He was just average. And the Warriors, he was just average. He's going to stay average in the Knicks. Um, next, we got Evan Fournier of the Orlando Magic. Um, a lot of people will put him in above average tier. But um, I, I don't think like he's that good anymore. He's not as good as he once was. He was never like amazing like some big superstar, but he at least is serviceable and good, but I'm going to put him in the average tier this time, he's really declined in my opinion, next, Gary Harris of the Nuggets, same deal, like he was, not, he was never that good anyway, I don't think he does many things well in my opinion, so that's why he's going in this category, Anthony Edwards of the Timberwolves, the only rookie shooting guard um, in this video, the only starting rookie shooting guard for the 2020-2021 NBA season, like I said in the point guard video with Lamella Ball and Killing Hayes, I'm going to put all these rookies clump them all in the average category, average tier. Excuse me, just because we haven't seen them play, I'm not going to predict their careers or how their season going to go. Excuse me, I'm just going to put them in the average category for now, just because we haven't seen them play. That's their default. Next, last player in the average category here, we got Derek White of the Spurs. If you saw my last video, I, I really li like the future that the Spurs young core, they have a de pretty decent young core with Keldon Johnson, Lonnie Walker, um, Derek White, DeJounte Murray, and they drafted um, Devin Vassell from Virginia Tech this past year in the draft. This past draft. Um, this past year in the draft. So um, I think, especially I really like that guard tandem with DeJounte Murray and Derek White for the future. But if you saw my point guard video yesterday, you know that I put DeJounte Murray in the average category. Same with Derek White. A lot of people are, are going to put these guys in above average. At, um, I might get a lot of heat for this Derek White. I probably did. In the average, I probably did last bit yesterday and ranking the point guards. We're putting DeJounte Murray only in average, but I'm going to put them both in average. So Derek White will go in average here if the San Antonio Spurs. Next, below, below average, such bum, Hanu Diallo from the Thunder. Now, I didn't know he was a shooting guard. I thought he was like some power forward or small forward because he won the dunk contest a couple years ago, and guards don't go in the dunk contest that often, but I guess he is. So yeah, Hanu Diallo doesn't do much, so he's going to go in the above. Below average, that's bum category. So, anyways, guys, this is Basketball Star um, 1130. I'm going to be releasing my small forwards video and power forward video probably later today. And then the center video tomorrow. And then we got breakout NBA players, borderline bus players, um, players that will break out. Um, and then we got um, award predictions for the NBA, award predictions for the NFL, and a couple other NFL videos. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys. Thank you for watching all this content. Thanks for all the support lately. I know I've been pushing out a lot of content for you guys. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. This is Basketball Star 1130. Bye. See you guys.